All right. Thank you very much. Good evening. And um, thank you for coming tonight to discuss the Lincoln Avenue and Middlefield Road intersection project. My name is Philip Kemi, and I'm the chief uh, transportation official for the city. I'm uh, joined tonight um, by our senior engineer, Rafael Rias, um, our associate engineer, um, Shirag Panchal, who's also our host tonight. So he's helping us to um, handle all the uh, questions or um, raised hands and all that stuff and also the presentation. And um, also we have um, Stephen Dodderman, and I, apologies, I hope I've said your name correctly, but he is our consultant from um, TJKM um, who did the um, safety assessment. Um, so we also have staff from uh, the Palo Alto Police Department in attendance, um, and they're, they're listening to um, any of your comments and suggestions. And uh, staff are first gonna give a presentation and then we will open it up uh, for your questions or comments. And can I get the next slide? There we are. Uh, tonight, staff will be providing information on recommendations from the interne intersection safety assessment uh, report. And before I turn it over to Rafael so he can delve into the details of the report, I'd like to uh, emphasize that the goal of this meeting is to seek your feedback on these recommendations in order to address uh, the community concerns and um, requests and recommendations for improvements. I wanna ensure you that we're committed to listening to your feedback and incorporating that into our decision-making process. Um, we've heard uh, your request for, I'm sorry, could you just stay back on that slide? Um, we've heard your request for improvements at this intersection and we appreciate your engagement. It's through your valuable insights and feedback that we can ensure that this project aligns with the needs and the desires of our community. Your participation in this process will allow us to inform um, public officials and collectively determine the next steps for this project. And we'll be recording your feedback tonight, but we'll also incorporate any feedback that we receive by email, or um, through the feedback tool on the project webpage, which um, if you don't have already, I'll provide later in the presentation. And following this meeting, if you have any questions or would like to discuss the project in more detail, um, staff's available to meet with you in person or virtually, um, either one-on-one, -on -one, feel free to reach out to us, um, or, or we could schedule another uh, meeting if um, that's something that uh, you'd like. And, We'd like your feedback, frankly, on what you'd like to do next um, tonight, if possible. Uh, ultimately, uh, we plan to share the intersection safety assessment report along with the feedback that we receive from you um, to our elected officials in order to make uh, longer term project recommendations. All right, now next slide. Sorry, Shirag. Okay. Um, to delve into the project setting and background um, to outline some of the um, factors that uh, drive this project. The intersection, as you know, is closely, um, is located closely to two significant community assets, um, the Addison Elementary School and the uh, Lucy Stern Community Centers. Um, both of those locations are hubs that attract a high volume of pedestrians, including children and family. And as we assess the intersection, it's crucial that we take into account the needs and safety of the individuals that utilize those facilities. Um, in addition to this, several factors were considered when preparing the report, including community concerns about the collision history, feedback that we received from the community regarding the use of Lincoln Avenue as a cut through route. And um, the Office of Transportation also considered um, ADT or um, average daily traffic count and speed data, uh, which we conducted in early 2022, a traffic signal warrant analysis um, that was conducted in June of 2022, and finally the intersection safety assessment that was completed by um, Stephen Dodderman of TJKM. And now I'm going to pass the presentation over to Rafael Rias, our senior engineer who will provide more details about the safety assessment and potential intersection improvements. Thank you, Philip. Um, my name is Rafael Rios. I'm a senior engineer with the Office of Transportation. Um, Charlotte, could you go to the next slide, please? 
And, and as Phil mentioned, um, yeah, this presentation is really going to be a high level summary of the of the safety evaluation and alternatives assessment. So um, just um, to summarize the things that we, the city, um, either have looked at or are in the process of doing. Um, one, number one, um, you know, we did did do an evaluation for a traffic signal following um, the traffic signal warrant analysis. Um, we want to, or we're also in the process and want to further review the vegetation that's out there, the parking restrictions to possibly enhance the site visibility triangles that are that are there and, and possibly enhancing them to to improve the um, sight lines. Um, as part of the analysis conducted by TJKM, they looked at a variety of alternatives, including always stop control, you know, possible roundabout, but they did have to take into consideration the um, the roadway classifications and the limited right of way that's present at the location. Um, and, and lastly, we, we also um, was part of the recommendation and considerations were for turn restrictions at this intersection. Um, and we'll get into that into a little bit more detail. Um, next slide. Um, so um, I, I think um, what we intend to move forward with in the very near future is, is to um, make some immediate improvements that we can do using the existing um, operations and configuration. And that will include you know, reviewing and ensuring that the vegetation that's currently out there, both the, the tree limbs and shrubbery, that they are compliant with our Muni code, um, with the PAMC, which is the Palo Alto Muni code. Um, you know, we'll review the, or well, we've already taken a look at the sight lines and and consider um, more conservative um, intersection sight distances, which would potentially require additional parking restrictions to increase the sight triangles. Um, we would also plan on reviewing the existing signage and pavement markings. And, and street furniture that's currently out there or that's not out there. For example, um, you know, legends on the pavement that might say school crossings. And I know there's um the white posts out there. That's what we consider the street furniture. And then also the there's been some relatively new signage for the school speed limits and and we'll review the existing signage and see if there's anything else that can help improve the situation out there in like and in a more near immediate near term fashion. Um, next slide please. Um, this is an example from the TJ Cam analysis where um, where we looked at intersection site distance, which is a um, pretty conservative um, uh, uh, process. A lot of times, um, or a typical practice is to look at stopping site distance, which has much smaller triangles. And um, as we go using some design principles for more and more conservative design principles like this, we can increase the sight lines. Um, you know, and the typical trade off is more parking loss to do this. And this combined with our, you know, the reviewing of the, the landscaping would provide some pretty quick improvements that we plan to do. Um, next slide, please. Um, the sec I have it here as the, as the second option, but really is what we looked at um, over in starting in early 2022 was um, we received some requests for traffic signals. So what we did is we performed an engineering um, traffic warrant or traffic signal warrant analysis. Um, this is a tool that traffic engineers use to determine if a traffic signal is warranted based on you know the engineering criteria, which can be different from community you know inputs and and other reasons to put a traffic signal. But generally, as traffic engineers, this is what we use to determine if a signal is warranted. Um, there's um, nine signal warrants that that are commonly found um, based in the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices, which is our industry standard for the, conducting this survey. Um, it takes into account several things like traffic volumes during the peak hours, 
the whole day, the number of pedestrians crossing. There is one of the warrants is based on collision history. Um, and, you know, after doing this analysis last year internally by the city, um, we determined that none of the warrants were met. Um, I know that sounds a little unusual with the collision history here, but um, just to get into a little bit detail about the collision history warrant, there are three criteria that all must be met to satisfy this warrant. And one of those is for an, an adequate trial of other um, remedies other than a traffic signal. Um, and that's why we started this current evaluation for alternatives. Okay, next slide, please. Um, a, a third option that that's really that came, that came out to be feasible. Um, I mentioned the traffic circle and always stops, and and those were looked into but eliminated for various reasons. Um, but um, restricting turning movements is something feasible, relatively easy to implement, and and was is one of the recommendations. Um, we noticed looking at the. Um, patterns of collisions. A lot of the incidents occurred to left turns or through traffic coming from Lincoln Avenue from both directions of Lincoln Avenue. Um, restricting left and through turning movements significantly reduces the conflict points, um, the main conflict points uh, between conflicting traffic approaches. Um, and um, we do recognize this could potentially displace those left and through turn movements that would be restricted, they would likely move to adjacent streets, um, possibly the nearby signals at Melville and Addison, or, you know, hopefully if they are not from the neighborhood, they would use some of their other arterials like University and Embarcadero. Um, this, and we've made requests to our police department and and there's been a, an uptick on enforcement, but we'd like to continue that and it would be a key in uh, that would be a key partnership with implementing any kind of turn restrictions. Um, next slide, please. Um, what we have here is, is a sample. This, this is just an example of a raised island turn restrict, restriction. Um, res, turn restrictions can be done either just by regulatory signs or with use of force, uh, um, force turn movements like this, like a raised island such as this. Um, yeah, this would still allow all the movements from Middlefield Road or the Main Street, um, left through right, um, but it would restrict the, um, the, the movements from Lincoln to right turns only. Um, next slide, please. Um, so that was a, just a really brief summary of, of our process and what um, the TJKM analysis included. Um, I'm going to pass this back to Philip to discuss this more. Um, thanks, thanks, Rafael. So as we conclude our presentation, uh, I want to discuss the next steps of this project, which involve the community engagement, um, obviously, which is inclusive of tonight and, and um, any future discussions that you want to have, um, and also the uh, implementation of immediate improvements. Um, just want to reiterate that we really value your input and we want to hear your opinions on preferred options for improving this intersection. Um, you can share your feedback with us tonight. Uh, we also have an online tool um, on our website on the Lincoln Middlefield Project website um, where you can also access the, the uh, safety assessment report and you can share your thoughts. Um, additionally, if you have specific concerns or suggestions regarding this project or how you want to engage with us, uh, please feel free to email us um, at transportation at cityofpaloalto.org. Um, we, uh, we appreciate your engagement and look forward to hearing from you. Uh, our goal is to enhance safety, so we would like to recommend improvements to sight lines in the near term, uh, pending the feedback that we hear from you um, on these recommendations. And um, Furthermore, the feedback and evaluations that are collected from the community will be compiled by our staff, um, whichever means you, you um, prefer to provide them to us. And we'll present these, um, the findings that we have uh, from your feedback to city officials who will um, ultimately provide us with direction on long-term improvements that best align with the community's needs and aspirations. 
And with that, I think probably we can go to the next slide, which is questions. And just want to thank you very much for your attention and um, support throughout the project and presentation. And um, we'll look forward to working with you together on this important project. And um, before um, I, I turn it over to you um, and open up the floor for, for um, questions, comments, I just want to um, mention um, regarding the um, the warrant analysis, because that's really a technical kind of jargony type thing. I just want to note that the reason why the warrants um, exist, like as an example, the traffic signal warrants, why why those warrants exist is the warrants can have, um, if the warrants are not met for a traffic signal, there can be unintended consequences um, that occur um, if a traffic signal was installed without meeting the warrants. And examples of that could be um, additional cut through traffic could occur. Um, it could cause additional speeding to occur on Lincoln. Um, it um, can cause additional traffic. And those are just a few of the, the examples for the reasons why those um, warrants for the traffic signal um, exist. Um, okay, now uh, close up the presentation and I just wanna open up the floor to questions and comments. Um, and if you, I noticed that there's already some questions in the QA, um, which maybe uh, we can, we can ta tackle um, if, if you wanna do those first, but then, if you'd like, you could raise your hand and then Shirag um, could allow you to speak. And um, just again, noting that we're recording this and so we'll be uh, recording it. We'll be um, planning to, to post this on the website afterwards. And again, please do not think that this is your only opportunity to provide feedback either. You're welcome to email us or um, use the tool. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our um, members of the community that have their hands raised, and then we'll um, start trying to take the Q and A's um, following, um, following the, the people who want to come. All Thank right, you, Philip. I will, I will uh, unmute each um, uh, attendees who has a question and I'll unmute. You will have a few minutes to ask your questions and then I'll, uh, the staff will answer the, your question. So first one in line we have is Christine in Crescent Park. Hi, um, can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great, uh, thank you so much for your work on this. Um, I just, uh, I'm, a, I'm an Addison parent and I, I read the, the safety analysis uh, report on the website. And I really appreciate everyone's hard work on this. And I'm, I'm not an expert on traffic safety. And, and so I, I leave precise solutions to you. But I just, I wanted to say that for my family, I have two children who attend Addison and we'd love to cross uh, Middlefield at Lincoln um, by, you know, when we walk or bike to school, but because, um, because of the, the safety record of that intersection, we avoid it. We actually avoid even walking on the sidewalks there because of the history of cars hopping the curb and, and, and crashing onto the sidewalk. Um, so I just, I just wanted to share that because I think that wasn't really captured in the, the safety report that there, there are people who would, who would love to cross there uh, on foot or by bike, um, but we, we don't because we know it's not safe. And obviously we wouldn't, have our children cross somewhere that's not safe. So I'd love to hear more about your thoughts on, you know, how how you're assessing what people would like to do if it was safer and and how you might approach um, safety for, for pedestrians crossing at that intersection. If you might do something like, um, if you're thinking about um, pedestrian crossings similar to like further north on Middlefield where there are turn restrictions and crosswalks, or if you're thinking about something different. Thank you, Christine. Yeah, thank you. I, Raphael, I don't know if you wanna jump in and, and um, speak to that. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll try and start off here. The, the first thing is that turn restrictions are one of the, um, I believe, um, what was discussed in option three. Um, so turn, restriction of turning movements, it could be forced turn islands or, or even just <clears throat> um, if we wanted to do something more near term, it could even be just signage restricting turnage, uh, turning. Um, 
and and that's something that could um, potentially provide an, an enhancement in the area. Rafael, do you have any other? Um, and, yeah. So so or and I also I believe be um, and thank thank you for your comment. Um, uh, you're and you're also asking about potential pedestrian crossing improvements. Um, so we did look at the number of pedestrian crossings, which is, you know, I mean, understandably for the same reasons that you point out, the, the actual number of crossings is relatively low. Um, in general, we do have criteria we also follow, you know, for a certain number of pedest a pedestrian warrant to, to mark a crosswalk and then that's kind of the first step followed by an, another analysis. If there is enough pedestrians to warrant a crosswalk, what type of facility is it a, you know, is it a traffic signal or is it a, a flashing beacon and such? Yeah. Um, you know, right now it's relatively low traffic volumes that wouldn't meet the criteria. Um, but I think we also look to things like our bicycle pedestrian plan and our safe routes to school routes. Um, I, I mean, you know, for, obvious reasons um I, I think our safe routes to school maps do not recommend crossing there and and recommend using the crossing at addison and that's the designated school route um you know that's not to say we can't change it if that's really something that the community wants to push for but that but that would involve you know if, if it doesn't meet the pedestrian volume warrant then i think that's something that we would want to incorporate in one of our pedestrian plans or as a policy um, to, to make the improvement if it's not warranted by a, the engineering side, so. Thanks, thanks for that. That And I, and I realize there's a plug in there um, and that is um, that we'll be starting our bicycle and pedestrian um, transportation plan update, which will uh, seek citywide feedback on um, not, not just for students, but for everyone who um, would, you know, like to see um, improvements in our bicycle and pedestrian transportation network throughout the city. Um, and we're just, um, we've just approved the contract for that. And so we'll be um, moving into the next phase of that um, in the coming months, which will be um, seeking um, community feedback. All right, um, hopefully that answers your qu questions there, Christine, and uh, maybe we can move on to the next one, Sherlock. Sure. Next one we have in line is Jeff Brown. Jeff, you can talk now. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. And thank you for having this presentation. Uh, a couple of questions. First of all, uh, if you could answer this question right away, you said you had questions submitted in Q&A. Um, but when I click on that, I don't, is there a, a place to see those questions? Because I don't see them on the screen. Yeah, oh, sorry. So um, af actually after we hear the, um, the each of the commenters that want to provide um, spoken comments, um, we'll get in, we'll read the Q and A's and we'll do our best to um, answer them. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, I didn't know you couldn't see them either. So um, my background is, one, first of all, as someone who lives about 70 feet from the intersection of Lincoln and Middlefield, I live on Lincoln, on the west side of Middlefield, and also as an engineer. I spent 37 years as a research engineer at NASA Ames Research Center. And, um, you know, I recognize that, and this is true probably of all city divisions, that there's a need to behave and don't take this as a as a uh, criticism but just there's in the city division behave bureaucratically they behave politically um but there's a need for the traffic division here to behave in an engineering fashion and you have an engineering problem this your the traffic system this lincoln middlefield intersection is part of the palo alto traffic system and it is a component of it and it is a component of it component of it that fails daily repeatedly not just when there's an incident report 
that there happens to be a crash because that's a worst case outcome. And it could be, you know, so far we've gotten away with playing with fire and there haven't been any very, very serious injuries, but there have been multiple crashes. And I would submit that many more than what the uh, report cited um, and why it went only five years back, I don't know, especially when two of those years were during the height of the pandemic, when there was far less traffic. In fact, some of those months, school wasn't even in session. So that those data are anecdotal at best. But if you ask a neighbor, not how to design the intersection, but just what's going on there, they could tell you that 10, 12, 15 times a day, I hear horns blaring or I see cars coming down Lincoln Avenue so fast that they go through the crosswalk. Well, there isn't a crosswalk, but if there were one, they go through the crosswalk uh, at a speed such that it looks like they're just gonna go through the intersection, especially if they're just making a right-hand turn. The intersection is failing daily, all the time. So the, the need to act reasonably and with engineering intent and backing is paramount here. And um, so I was disappointed or, or somewhat befuddled in reading this report, for instance, you know, let's just get the, the traffic signal thing off the table, not warranted, understand why you have to have warrants. We're not gonna have it, fine. Uh, cutting back foliage, that's not the issue, especially when you say that the, tr the tree trunks which, and nobody wants to get rid of the trees, the tree trunks uh, blocking the vision triangle are within city code. Well, if that's the case, I would, I would submit there's a faulty city code, but, but that's beside the point. Nobody wants to lose more trees than we already have, and there are ways to get around it. And the third thing, putting uh, turn restrictions, well, now you're talking about altering the function of the intersection, of that subsystem, because it's no longer a through route from university to Alma, which really it should be. It can be handled safely. So there's no reason to cut that direct route. And all you're gonna do, if you force people to turn right going east on Lincoln at Middlefield, they're gonna turn right, then they're gonna turn left at Kingsley, then they're gonna turn left again at Fulton or at, um, uh, or the next street, um, and, and you're going to get more traffic, you're going to get frustrated drivers, and then they're going to continue on Lincoln, you know, down beyond Fulton. So those are, none of those answers are answers, is, in my view. Meanwhile, there, I'm just surprised that nobody's talking about not just signs, because frankly, signage is not effective <laughs> by itself, particularly when all over the city it's obscured by bushes, tree branches, other signs, whatever, which if you, anybody walks or bikes or drives around the city, you see it is all over the place. So these school speed limits of 20 miles per hour, well, yeah, good idea, but a sign isn't going to buy you 20 miles per hour, particularly when this report says that people are already doing upward of 30 miles per hour on Middlefield. So let's approach it as a real engineering problem that has engineering solutions. And one of very important one would be to um, reduce the turning radii and thereby the width of the crossings at the intersection, make it a neck down intersection. And as I've said to, to, to some of you, I don't understand why that's not being offered when just two blocks to the south or three blocks to the south at the intersection of Middlefield and Kellogg, which is a three-way intersection, by the way, it makes it a little simpler, but it doesn't change the principle. There is a uh, an intersection with reduced areas with curbs that bulb out 
Um, so I think rather than talking about, you know, possible remedies that really aren't remedies, in fact, you're telling us they're not remedies in the case of the traffic signal, and really in the case of the trees and the, and the uh, you know, the, the plants, vegetation as well. Um, and because of the turn restrictions, it alters the inter intersection. Let's talk about keeping the intersection as it is and making it safe, which can be done and doing it fast, you know, and, and ask us, the neighbors or anybody who's concerned to help you advocate to do that to the political people in the government. I mean, that, that onus shouldn't be on you. You shouldn't take our ideas and have to go to city council and say, well, this is what the neighbors think should be done. Let us come as well and, and build a united front to really solve this problem. So that's, that's my feeling. And, and I just wonder if we can move this along because as I said, this fails all the time, all the time. I, I, I don't think any of you would say that it's okay to have an intersection in our city traffic network where if it weren't for cars blaring their horns at each other, you know, a dozen times a day or more, or screeching on their brakes or suddenly diverting their course, the intersection would, would have would have collisions every day. I don't I don't think any of you would accept that, but that is the way the intersection operates right now, every day. And it has for over a decade or more. I, I mean, as long as I've been paying attention. So let's fix it and let's fix it fast because it's every day we don't fix it, you know, the worst could happen. And that's that's what I want to offer. And, and, and not as a way of criticism, but as a way of let us help. But ultimately you guys have to do the engineering, but let's look at engineering solutions that will work. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Just want to respond really quickly, um, just to uh, note that you know, that, first of all, that you're, you know, I'm I'm joined here by engineers, and so we are trying to um, engineer solutions here. Um, but really, what we're trying to do is have a community conversation and talk about options, and um, certainly bulb outs, um, which is what you were, I believe, describing, um, is one of the options, and that's certainly something we could talk about. Um, and um, it's something that, uh, you know, we currently have um, some striping and some white posts that simulate a bulb out. It's not quite the same as concrete bulb outs, um, but we have had some um, uh, difficulty with, you know, recent uh, bulb outs um, as a solution um, in the city not being that popular. Um, but that is certainly something that we'd be happy to discuss if that's, um, uh, you know, something that the, the community feels would be appropriate in this location. So thank you very much for your comment. I look forward to uh, talking with you more about this. And Shrag, do you want to? Um, oh, uh, next one. Okay. I think I may have missed Lucinda Eppert. Uh, thank you. I'm going to unmute. And uh, if you have a question, Lucinda, please let us know. If not, then I'll go to the next panelist. Um, Lucinda. Yes. Hi. No, I do. I do have a statement. Um, it's not necessarily a question, um, but um, I just want to uh, reiterate a lot of what Jeff said. Jeff is my next door neighbor, our previous speaker. Um, I live one house uh, west of um, Mr. Brown on the corner of um, Byron and Lincoln. Um, I really want to reiterate what he said about this intersection and the impact that it has on the neighbors. Um, many times a day, we do hear um, honking, uh, squealing of brakes, and every single time, I hold my breath waiting for the impact. I can't begin to tell you how many times um, we've heard the impact, we go running out, go running down the street to see if there's something we can do to help. I feel extraordinarily lucky that there has not been a fatal accident at that intersection. 
um, yet, but I do think that we are skating on thin ice, as Jeff was saying. Um, and uh, well, there are so many near misses at that intersection, which are not being measured um, by taking traffic statistics or examining the number of accidents. Um, and I have actually been talking and asking city council to do something about this for 10 years. Um, and I'm grateful that at least at this point, we are beginning to do something to address it. Uh, and I do appreciate staff putting their energy and time into this and staying after hours in order to have this community meeting. Um, so uh, this, is a, this is a good step. Um, I'm, I have always been very much against the idea of a traffic signal at that corner because um, in addition to the unintended consequences that um, you, that um, the, the uh, traffic department um, senior engineer raised, um, traffic signals simply stack cars. And what would happen on the Western half of Lincoln is that these cars would be stacked back through the intersection that is next to Addison School that would not only expose um, the children and then you know, on either side, all of the residents to um, completely unnecessary um, car exhaust, it would also impact um, a crosswalk right there at the corner of Lincoln and Byron that, that hundreds of children <laughs> use to get to school. That's one of the major ways that children get to school is crossing um, through that crosswalk. My own children did. Um, and Jeff's children did. Um, and I would hate to have cars stacked up back um, across that crosswalk. I just think that that's a recipe for disaster. I also wanna say that I am really, really sorry that in California, we do not seem to be capable of learning how to manage and use traffic circles. Um, I reside half the year in British Columbia and traffic signals are commonly used there at much larger intersections than the one here at Lincoln and Middlefield. And I was just driving in the state of Washington. And again, traffic signals are commonly used. People, once they've learned how to use them, they have no difficulty. I really, really wish that we could bring that back as a solution, as a possible solution. Um, because um, I think that that would be, um, an engineering solution that might satisfy um, Jeff, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, in any case, um, I, I do think that they are a very, um, very good device for, for handling um, cars that are um, going to be in, in, in conflict with each other. Um, I, finally, I, I want to say that I am, I am not opposed to the idea of a right turn only um, intersection. In fact, I've been advocating for that to anybody who would listen to me. Um, I think that um, I would like to see less traffic on Lincoln. Um, it may be considered an arterial, but I think it's being taken advantage, being, being taken advantage of by things like the Waze app. Um, and uh, ride share drivers, the Uber and Lyft drivers are seeing that and are using it because the um, volume of traffic on Lincoln, I've lived here um, for almost 30 years and the volume of traffic um, has skyrocketed um, on Lincoln and I, not in proportion to the increased population in Palo Alto or um, the increased um, um, daytime population, people who come into Palo Alto to work. Um, it was really with the advent of the ride sharing system and um, the um, interactive uh, uh, um, direction finding um, like ways uh, that we began to see a lot more traffic on Lincoln. So um, I would not be sorry to see uh, the traffic volume on Lincoln reduced. And if the right turn only solution would do that, um, I, uh, that would be acceptable to me. Um, 
again, I really want to thank you. And I, I understand that you are not finished with this and that you're continuing to take um, input from neighbors. I appreciate that. And I, and I do hope that you will consider all um, the options that are on the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to quickly note, and I don't know if um, Stephen wants to chime in, but um, I, I believe that the consultant did look at um, the possibility of uh, roundabout in, in this area, um, but I believe that it didn't fit um, due to the geometry. So that um, was not a possible option. I'm not sure, um, Stephen, if you wanted to provide any more context to that, making sure I got that all correct, of course. Well, what you said is absolutely correct. Um, to install a roundabout to account for the design of heavy vehicles and everything else, that would require taking away um, the four properties essentially around it. And that would essentially, uh, you would have to de demolish three of those homes. So that, that's kind of the issue there to account for that. Uh, there is a potential for a mini roundabout, but even that is still a very hard sell because it doesn't really resolve the issue in terms of that. In order to get that reduction in speed, in order to get that reduction in the collisions, you would need a larger diameter roundabout to account. Thank you. And thank you so much for your comments. All right, uh, Shirag, let's keep going here. Sorry, I was on mute. I didn't even know it. Uh, next one we have in line is Ron Horn. Uh, Ron, you may ask your question now. Hi, Ron, we cannot hear you. You have to unmute. Okay, sorry. I just want to second what Jeff said. You know, we live around the corner on Fulton, but we do turn frequently left onto uh, Lincoln from Middlefield. First of all, the one thing that I do never hear, there needs to be a goal of safety, a goal. It can't be, sorry, we can't do this because of this. There should be no, you know, the goal should be no accidents at this intersection. Even if it's not attainable, you need to state a goal. The next is what Jeff brought up about near misses. It's really risky behavior. Uh, we were driving on Sunday night and saw a, two cars go within a few feet, you know, someone shooting across Lincoln. So I think that, you know, I think you need to get um, input from the community I think you should have a site visit where people sit there and look at these solutions. They don't look at just charts with, you know, we'll remove uh, 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 vegetation. Have people stand in those locations and talk about how these things might, might or might not impact things. I think the little white barriers that are there are really actually not effective. You know, others may say right turns are good, but uh, I think you need to get the community um, get some, have a couple of site visits. Uh, I don't know that you're consultant. I know the data only went to 2021. Uh, when I looked at it, I, it was a big report. Um, and I think, you know, I'm sure there's people in this meeting that would go to the city council. And I think, you know, if you look at other industries which have safety issues, I work, I'm an engineer as well, and, and, a, and, a, and a, 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 a an industry that has to be, you know, have safe conditions. You need to put a goal and that goal should be here. If nothing else, no accidents and certainly reduction in accidents and near misses. And uh, so I would, again, second what Jeff said, he lives closer to the problem. And I think you should have a few meetings with individuals on the corner of Lincoln and Middlefield and talk about how the solutions, what they really look like. You know, could you have a crosswalk? Could you have blinking lights like they have in, in uh, Midland Park? They have one on uh, Middle Field. You know, it doesn't have really large traffic. Uh, I mean, a large amount of pedestrian traffic, but yet they have it. You have one for pedestrians right up near uh, on Embarcadero where people can turn off to go onto Alma. Maybe think of a little bit beyond just these solutions. And I don't think we should, I don't think anybody in the state or in this county should justify, well, we can't do this because of regulations. 
they should be confronted with the idea of, of addressing safety and making it as safe as possible with a goal of no accidents. That's my say. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, thank you very much. Just quick, quick response, just to, to note that um, really ag agree and, and, and hear what you're saying. And um, we would definitely like to um, meet um, with anyone that is interested out, out at, at the intersection and talk through um, solutions and, um, and, and, and talk through um, issues. So uh, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, all right, Shrug. Move on to the next Thank you, Philip. Um, Definitely next send to one out. Like. I say Thank just you, send out a notice for, for, for coming and, and just meet with us. I know it was effective with some signage on Fulton. I met with one of your engineers and I think the end, uh, the end solution was good. Okay, enough from my... Thank, thank you for letting you me so speak much. again. Thank you for having this meeting. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. you. Next one we, uh, we have in line is Kate Godfrey. Kate, you can ask your question now. There we go. Send it. Discuss is the effect of the two Kate, if you're speaking, we cannot hear you. Uh, can you speak a little louder or closer? No, I am better. Okay, is this better? Yes, much better. Kate, we are still having a hard time to hear you. The voice is cutting off. Uh, we cannot hear you at all right now. Kate, if, 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 it, okay. if it's easier for you, I'm not sure if you're on a phone. If you want, you could submit your comments on um, our Q&A and we could uh, read them out, out loud as well um, after we finish. Factor is, uh, the on the west side. Okay, we barely hear you. So I'll ch check back in with you. Uh, I'm going to the next... Uh, Resident, we have. Thank you, Kate. Next one we have in line is Barbara and Brain Hotsby. Barbara, you can you may ask your question now. Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. We live about a half a block north of Lincoln on Middlefield. And our, we have two grandsons and their parents who live half a block down on Middlefield, past Lincoln, south of Lincoln. So naturally we're walking back and forth a lot and uh, we are extremely careful. We just pray that our grandsons are careful, 11 and 14. But it is what I think uh, Jeff said, it's like, Really, it's too bad that we have an intersection that is so dangerous to cross. So we appreciate everything you're doing, but the the right turn only illustration looked like people could still go straight across Lincoln. So I'd like to ask if that's the case. If we're going to do right turn only, I think it would be good if it were only right turn only and not right turn plus straight across. And the last question is, have you considered speed bumps for all four streets? Serious speed bumps. Thank you. Hi, this is Bryn Osby. I, I wanted to ask a separate question. Um, notwithstanding what uh, I think was Jeff said about signage, I wonder if, if signage that indicated a minimum fine of 500 to $1,000 for speeding violations in school zones would have some deterrent effect and may require uh, a change in state law. But uh, I think it, it's, 
if we were able to implement that along with police enforcement, uh, it would be a big help. Thank you, Barbara and Brian. Thank you. Um, Raphael, I'm wondering, can you um, respond to the question about, well, I guess maybe any of those questions, the question about speed um, humps first, um, and then the other question about um, the um, the uh, forced turn islands or the, the no right turns. And well, if you can to, unmute. Just to note, as we're waiting, I'm not sure if Rafael's coming in here, but I, I think um, that, that um, speed humps has been looked at, and um, there are some east of Middlefield. Um, so typically, the process for adding speed humps, and that, that is one of the alternatives that could be looked at, um, that is typically used by speed data. And for speed humps, um, it's typically um, a, a community vote um, to determine whether um, speed humps could go in. But that is um, one of the tools that could be used to lower speeds um, on the weekend. Rafael, are you still here? Did we lose you? No, I'm, I'm here. Sorry, I was on mute earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's correct. Um, that's correct for Lincoln. Um, I, yeah, um, I, I don't recall. I was trying to look it up, um, but I, I didn't get to it. Um, how far east? I, I believe there are some to the east on, on Lincoln, um, not to the west, but it would you know, that process starts off as a formal, um, I think, a petition request from the community and then involves a, 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 a survey of speeds. And then it, if it qualifies meeting the criteria, I, then um, then it would go to community vote because similar to the traffic signal, there's, you know, unintended consequences of acceleration noise and, 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 and other stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm, I need, I need to refresh myself with the, our policies, but I I'll, I don't believe that um, we don't put them on the arterial road. So wouldn't Middlefield wouldn't be um, qualified for a for a speed table or speed hump. Sorry, and then Rafael, the other question was about the uh, turn, the no right turn, a forced turn island. And actually, Stephen, maybe you might want to chime in on this as well. Um, I think I, I believe the question, if I was understanding it correctly, and feel free to let me know, um, Barbara, if I'm not getting this correct, but um, on the example, there's a um, no right turn um, in one direction, um, and then there's through in the other direction on Lincoln. And I think that that was the clarification that you were seeking, I believe, is would the no right turns be enforced in both directions? Is that correct? Um, well, well, whether it's one or both, I mean, it would be kind of the community process. I mean, yeah, I, I think our first thought would be both, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, my, my question was really, it, it looks like it's right turn only that you were suggesting. Correct. Which I think sounds good, but it also looked like on the illustration you could also go straight across Middlefield. And the, the traffic going down Lincoln, as I observe it, being a neighbor, is not what is going so fast. Most people on Lincoln, it seems like they wait, 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 which they should, until the fast traffic going down Middlefield uh, has a gap in it. So it's the middle field traffic that I think is too fast. And I wouldn't want a uh, right turn only to also allow go straight across middle field. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so the, to... Sorry, Stephen, just to cut in really quickly. So the no right turn would not allow cars to travel straight across middle field on, on Lincoln. So it would prevent, it would prevent that. Yeah, you covered what I was about to say. Yes, and, and and the sample that we had earlier, it it only shows it on one side. So I think, you know, like the other the other approach of link or of the side street in our case, Lincoln, it it wasn't shown. So it was showing kind of a full access left 
through and right movements, I think going down the figure and it was only showing a sample of the island going up in the diagram or the, you know, um, which would restrict it to a right turn only prohibiting lefts and through movements. But that's just a sample. Thank you, Rafal. Next one we have in line is Linda Filo. Um, Linda, you may ask questions now. Okay, hi. Um, thank you for all the work you've done. I'm going to be really quick here. Um, I live on Middlefield in the intersection. And um, during when I'm a high school teacher and I've taught online for a year and a half during COVID, and my students got used to hearing this every day. And it was like amazing. And then I call 911 all the time. Like they know me, you know, it's it's just, this has got to change. And we all know that. But I, um, I agree with what everyone's been saying, but I feel like um, definitely the the right turn only is the way to go right here. It seems like that would be the easiest, quickest right now and, and doing it immediately. I hate to, I'm scared what's gonna happen next, you know, so, but that's my input and thank you for everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. Next the um, one we have in line is, I believe, may have a different name, but uh, Lawrence Community Center. Did we, I mean, I, I, sorry to cut in, um, I did notice uh, several of the um, written um, questions were from Lawrence. Lawrence, did you just want to ask them live or would you like no, to? No, I'll leave those to stand for, um, maybe to answer later or just people, other people to see the questions and maybe you can address them through comments that you add to the website or, or something else. Some of them are technical and we really don't need to go over. Um, but I did wanna share some comments uh, with you all and with the neighbors um, about the report and the rest of it. So can I go ahead with those? Sure. Oh yeah, please. Okay, so some, some neighbors will be familiar with this, but just hear me out. Um, during 20 minutes of standing near the intersection, one sees a number of low clearance cars slowing to under five miles per hour to traverse the dip without bottoming out. Therefore, I still strongly believe dip signs would be helpful as many Lincoln Avenue drivers are, I've interviewed saw the car that hit them and thought they had plenty of time to cross, but don't remember seeing the dip nor slowing down for it despite probably doing so. Um, one driver accelerated quickly westbound on Lincoln from the stop sign to get to the hospital emergency room, lost control from the dip, and a half block away totaled a parked car and sheared off the power pole feeding much of the elementary school. Long term, the dip could be removed by adding a drain that feeds into the new four foot diameter storm drain that runs under Lincoln. I was told that that pipe will rarely reach anything near capacity. Now, your report only covered injury accidents. so. Perhaps they weren't injury accidents, but the light pole and stop sign on the southwest corner were all replaced four times in a year from wrecks commiserate with the vehicle slowing for the dip, as was an accident that caused one of our neighbors a severe brain injury. They were stopped at the stop sign when a car in a collision bounced off their car right at the dip. So they were just waiting for traffic to clear and two other cars collided and one of them bounced into their car. Um, and fortunately they didn't have side curtain airbags. So their head bounced off the window and they're still dealing with the, the brain injury from that still recovering. So walking the intersection and checking the sight lines shows that trimming the foliage between the middle field sidewalk and the street below six or seven feet would be a big help for the Lincoln traffic looking along middle field road on the Northeast and Southwest corners of the intersection. Trimming the bushes back to the border of the sidewalk would be a big help too as some of them encroach from the yards. Uh, the city report assesses collisions reported to an injury only database. I'd get the guess that over three quarters of the wrecks at the intersection are not accounted for. I've not studied um, by your metrics, the collisions that Craig, Yana and I have documented to determine which of ours are in your sample. And if your sample is representative of our larger body of documented wrecks, as far as like which ways the cars were going. Clearly, 
most of ours didn't yield injuries and you only covered injuries. So there's only a small amount of overlap. But the question is whether the injury collisions are representative of the other collisions as far as who is going what direction. Um, now, from your graphic, it seems to me that all of the injury collisions involved uh, crossing vehicles, none turning. Um, and if that's not the case, I'm misunderstanding your graphic. So from reading the report, it seems to me that the city is suggesting removing a heap of parking spots and by implication, a number of our large diameter street trees to make regulation sight lines and or making Lincoln right turn only on the middle field. I don't think taking parking spots away by itself will have much impact on the frequency of collisions at the intersection. Too many people don't inch out far enough past the visual curtain of mature street trees to get a good view before accelerating. They jet out based on an incomplete view and feeling lucky. Perhaps bulb outs would help folks feel safe inching out far enough to see past the obstructions. We have bollards currently to the left, um, but uh, people don't don't feel protected by them or don't really know where they are relative to their car or whatever it is. And they don't, generally don't inch out far enough before they jam on the gas pedal. Um, additionally, I do not want our mature street trees to be felled. As well, folks who unexpectedly slow for the unmarked dip as they cross Middlefield Road will still be hit as they didn't factor in their lower average speed in the intersection, no matter how well they can see oncoming traffic. The report argues that the total time spent waiting to cross intersections would go down with the right turn only from Lincoln option. For these reasons, my preference amongst the options laid out in the report would be to only implement the right turn only option for folks driving along Lincoln Avenue. Please also consider deleting or marking the dip and trimming the bushy low foliage as I suggested above. And thank you for your efforts to make this intersection safer, calmer, and quieter as we hear screeching tires and honking horns many times a day and dread the sound of colliding cars as my household members are often the first bystanders on the scene attempting to prevent further injury and destruction. Um, and so I'll just also, I mean, we're half a block away from this intersection and uh, I love to hear honking horns just because I know if I hear a horn honk, there will not be a collision. I've never heard a, a collision when a horn honks. That usually means people have time to smash on the brake pedal. I'd rather not have to hear honking horns, but it's better than hearing cars collide. Um, now I've never witnessed a pedestrian or a cyclist being hit and maybe that's because I didn't hear it from where I am or maybe I just wasn't around for it. And just in general, I would say that roundabouts are great, but it's not a roundabout if half the people stop and the other half, half the people um, don't. You need to have a yield sign for everyone entering the roundabout in order for it to make any sense at all. So the, the circle or whatever you want to call it at, what is it, Bryant and Addison to me is ridiculous. And I say, just as a side note, put a yield sign in all directions for that because um, the people who are on Bryant just wiggle their car and, and try not to slow down. And the other people, well, it's just, it's, it's not much different than a two-way stop sign, except uh, you really can't blow off the stop sign if uh, without wiggling your car. So you can't go too fast through it. it maybe slows people down, but it's very unsafe for pedestrians because the pedestrians are trying to cross in the crosswalks. They aren't marked, but in the straight lines and the cars going around the circle are going in and out of the crosswalk, um, even if their, their tr intended travel is parallel to it. So maybe we need to mark crosswalks that are further away from the intersection so that those cars going around the stupid little circle don't go through all the crosswalks and knock off pedestrians. Anyways, um, but yeah, thank you for engaging in this process. And like I say, of what the report says, I'd rather not see the trees go. I'd rather not see all the parking go, um, but right turn only makes sense to me, especially if your report's accurate, saying that the total time at intersections, including the next intersection you have to turn at, et cetera, would be reduced. Because instead of having to wait to cross middle field, those cars will just wait until the first lane clears turn right and get on with their day and overall spend less time waiting at intersections than they would waiting at Lincoln with the added benefit that we don't have to hear honking, screeching, destruction, and there's fewer accidents or collisions, refuse to call them accidents. Um, okay, thanks for listening and uh, I hope you get my idea clearly. Thank you so much for your comments. Thank you. Next one we have in line uh, Craig, Craig, you may speak now. 
Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm Craig White, the, the guy that has all the data if you haven't been on Nextdoor, but uh, I live uh, one, one house away from the corner and we've been collecting data for about five years. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's all on Nextdoor. Uh, the the right-hand turn is, is not a bad solution, but there's two problems here. Not only the people stopping, uh, going, uh, crossing Middlefield on Lincoln, but it's also the speed on, on the Middlefield drivers. Now, I don't know how the right-hand turn only would slow down the Middlefield cars, cars. I don't think, if anything, uh, it would increase the speed on Middlefield. Uh, Believe it or not, when people when people are crossing on Lincoln, uh, you know, the cars on Middlefield slow down. <laughs> but if there's no cars crossing, then there's going to be even more speeding. Uh, also, how how are bikers going to cross if there's only a right-hand turn only? Because that intersection is very popular with high school students uh, going to Pali. So if you have a right turn only, you know, are bikers vehicles or are they pedestrians at that point? Um, so uh, I, I'm sorry, I joined the meeting late and I guess the lights are ruled out and I would like to, if you can briefly go over that again, I'd be interested. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And just to, to quickly note that, that, that we're gonna try and post this uh, recording of this presentation so that you can go back and, and watch it. Um, I, I'm sure, um, actually, Rafael, do you wanna give a brief overview of the, traffic signal warrants and um sure. Sure. okay yeah so uh, well thank you for joining even if it was late um and as Philip mentioned we're gonna share this whole meeting on the on the project web page that's up right now the Lincoln Middlefield shortcut one um but so we did do an engineering analysis which follows uh, the nine signal warrants for evaluation and the intersection you know based on traffic volumes and data um does not meet the engineering analysis. Um, so, so from a traffic engineering perspective, it would, um, you know, um, we it would be difficult for us, or we wouldn't recommend it to city council. But that, and and they're the ones that actually make the final determination and direction to us. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. You know, like if it was something that the community really, really wanted, we would try to reflect that as best as possible in our. In our reports to to the council and say, hey, you know, engineering analysis doesn't meet it, but the community really, really, really wants it. Um, you know, and so here's direction. But we also we also covered a little bit of some of the unintended consequences that come with a signal when they're not warranted. Um, and I believe I think I covered. Um, yeah. I'll just chime in. So just to so say, you know, so the reason why traffic signal, uh, there's a traffic signal warrant analysis is, is as Rafael was mentioning, a traffic signal is supposed to be like a demand management tool, a tra traffic demand management tool. Um, so putting a traffic signal in when it doesn't meet the engineering warrants, and there was, I believe, nine different warrants that were looked at. Um, it didn't meet any of the nine warrants. Um, putting a traffic signal in when the warrants are not met can have um, can cause unintended consequences, um, such as increased speeds, um, increased cut through traffic, increased traffic at the intersection, um, increased noise um, from vehicles that would be idling at the intersection. Um, I think that's all. Did I cover all of them, Rafael, or most of them, anyways? Um, yes, regarding regarding the the traffic signals analysis or evaluation. Okay, and, then, and then I think Rafael, we're going to say something. I I, be, I believe um, Lawrence uh, was asking about the tree trimming in the Muni Code. We're going to say something about that as well. Um, sure, sure, yes, um, yeah. So I mean, in our Muni Code, we have several things you know that kind of protects the mature trees. Um, it identifies. So there, I kind of mentioned early on in, in the meeting that there were multiple different site triangles in our in, in our muni code. It identifies a 35 foot triangle at each corner, and essentially, it said you know like shrubbery or bushes should be below 36 inches, 
or 30 inches above the sidewalk or 36 inches from the pavement height and mature trees are okay as long as there's no limbs below seven feet. Um, so kind of that three to seven foot area would be clear. And that's using um, you know, a, a 35 foot triangle. Um, and one of the things that we do wanna look into further is expanding that using a more conservative triangle to, to meet that clearance. You know, I, I think, I don't think there was anybody here that really wants the trees, <laughs> the mature trees to be removed or not. Um, but, you know, like some of the lower landscaping, um, you know, some of them are currently com com compliant with the code if they're a house or two down, but maybe we'll look into um, expanding the triangle to, to increase that. Um, but, but, but basically, yeah, that, that's a kind of a, paraphrasing our muni code is mature trees limbs should be higher than seven feet and shrubs should be less than three feet so you're on mute okay, okay. Th thank you so much um and with that we've got 26 q a questions and i'm noting um the suggestion that we had from lawrence to just take these and maybe answer them offline I'm trying to see, actually, most of the questions are from Lawrence, um, but there's a, a few questions, comments. Um, maybe I'll just go through the ones that are not um, from Lawrence, or is there anything, um, you know, I maybe we've answered some of these questions as we've gone through the dialogue. Maybe does anyone else want to come off of uh, um, uh, mute, raise your hand and speak now, and, and maybe we can address any of those that are not. Um, we haven't, and then otherwise we'll just take these um, offline and and um, do a, a, I guess like an FAQ type response to each one of these questions here. Um, if that sounds uh, like a reasonable approach to everyone. It looks like we've Thank got you, three more hands up uh, now. Oh, there we go. Sure. We have next one. Uh, we have recently raised hands uh, fresh raise of hands and the next one in queue is Jeff Brown again. Jeff, you may speak now. Thanks. Um, yeah, my the, what I wrote in the comment was, I think it was um, Philip who had mentioned that you had looked or you had received some negative comments about bulb outs in the past. And I'm just curious if you want to, um, expand on that a little bit because I, I don't know what they would be other than possibly restricting, and it's something I think you could get around easily, but possibly restricting the turning ability of emergency vehicles, fire trucks and such. And then um, I also asked, what about, you know, you talk about maintaining middle field as an arterial basically, and so you can't put stop signs and that's fine but you're posting a 20 mile per hour school speed limit. So what about enforcing it, not with the police, but with rumble strips, I think, which are more effective than speed bumps. Um, and you could even, you've got a school corridor that runs from Addison all the way to Embarcadero with uh, Lucy Stern as well there. And it's not unwarranted that you would take some extra steps to maintain low velocities on middle field. So what about using really effective signage and rumble strips on the street? Um, and also I wanna say that while the report says that uh, the, the speed limit is not typically exceeded on Lincoln, I can tell you from standing in front of my house that first of all, it often is, cars are often going, you know, often enough going in excess of 25 miles per hour. Plus they're doing it when they're passing my driveway, which is really far too close to the intersection to be going that fast anymore. So they're not slowing down and they're almost coming to a stop reluctantly. And then the last comment I had, and thank you for allowing this, um, is again, under the, <laughs> you know, the, the statement I made earlier that this is a problem every day, multiple times per day, it's failing and we are playing with fire here. 
it, it occurs to me that one thing that could be done right away, don't have to cut down any trees, build any curbs, do anything with islands or signs, is uh, put up fish eye mirrors, wide angle mirrors, that for drivers both going east and west on Lincoln, so that they could see approaching traffic on Middlefield without having to go out into traffic. So uh, if you might want to comment on any of those, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And thanks thanks again for um, continuing on and actually expressing um, the, the things that you said in the Q&A. So just uh, really quickly, um, I, I guess, uh, bulb outs um, were not expressly discussed at this location. Um, so not saying, suggesting that we heard negative feedback at this location for bulb outs where there kind of are, um, I guess, many bulb outs from those, those white things and not, not proper bulb outs. Um, but we have had um, some negative reactions to other bulb outs that were installed in the city in certain locations. So just noting that, that that's something that um, we have heard in other locations in the city, um, a negative reaction to. That doesn't mean that that's not um, a possible or appropriate uh, treatment for this location. Um, Rafael, do you want to speak to the fish I'm here? Oh, and I'm sorry, one more thing that I want to note is um, thanks for your suggestions. Um, we're noting, of course, that um, there's stuff that we can do um, to enhance the um, the the reality that we're that that's a school zone. Um, so that that could include pavement markings. Um, I don't know that we can do rumble strips on middle field. Um, that's something that um, would need um, my engineer to weigh in on as well. So, um, Raphael, Stephen, do you want to talk at all about the fisheye um, mirror suggestion or uh, the rumble strip um, suggestion? And also just to note um, that we do have PD here listening to this um, um, presentation. And I'm noting that um, in the new um, in the new budget this year, um, starting in July, um, PD has more budget to um, have officers that will work in specific traffic enforcement um, details. Um, so that will um, help with um, bolstering um, the ability to, to enforce um, traffic regulations. So um, thank you very much. Um, I see Lieutenant Bichetti on, on the line here. So he's hearing all of this. Um, Rafael, do you want to discuss either the mirrors or the- Sure. Um, um, I'll kind of be brief. It's not a popular response, but like for the mirrors, they are not an approved traffic control device either by federally or state. Um, you know, they, pre they do, I don't want to use this excuse, but they do present some liability if we put them up, you know, they're not usable by all drivers if they're vandalized or get dirty or, you know, they they can provide a false secure sense of security or, um, and, you know, it's not an approved device to improve safety. So, and, you know, we, we the city itself, it's been a long time, but um, they have tried them on like bike paths and stuff and, I know from a vandalism and maintenance aspect, um, it was my or my understanding it was before my time, but it was short lived. They, they didn't last long. Rumble strips, um, they're not they're not really used in residential areas. They do create pretty noisy situation, and you know, twenty four hours a day, anytime a car goes over them. Um, that's just that practice. I mean, you know, you know it's, if that's, it's, we don't, yeah, we, in practice, we don't put them in residential areas, not to say it's <laughs> not an option, I guess. So uh, let me uh, touch on a couple points, if that's okay. Um, with regards to the bulb outs, first and foremost, um, it does reduce the pedestrian crossing, so it makes it safer in that regard. But based off of the crashes, which are primarily T-bone, the provision of a bulb out does not necessarily impact um, it doesn't necessarily impact those kind of collisions. It does semi reduce speeds. According to the Federal Highway Administration, that's typically about one to three miles per hour. So again, it's not necessarily an effective tool for this location. Uh, kind of going a little bit more with the um, rumble strips. Uh, what Raphael kind of said over there was absolutely correct. You're looking at about 6,000 vehicles per day on Middlefield. You're looking at about 2,000 vehicles per day 
on Lincoln. And every time a single car drives over that, you're going to hear that noise twice, if not more. So I just kind of want to bring up those kind of components there. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Rafael. Next one we have in line is Arts Klarov. Uh, Art, you may speak now. Art, we cannot hear you. Art, are you there? Looks like still trying to figure it out. We'll come back to you. Uh, we have next one in line is Cooper. Cooper, you may speak now. Sorry, it's looking like. Can, right can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank you for calling this meeting and uh, letting us express our opinions on this. Uh, listening to this, I, I'm hearing a lot of. I think he got muted. Yeah, looks like he got muted. Can you unmute him, please, again? I'm hearing you. Um... What I'm hearing is a lot of uh, things that won't work, uh, even though the suggestions are made. Um, and I know all about the bureaucracy, but I, I just want to tell you, uh, I agree 100% with uh, Jeff and Linda. I actually live on Lincoln and Middle Field. And there have been a couple of occasions where people have come up onto the porch um i've seen the light post across the uh street knocked down at least three times um uh, accidents oh, near misses almost every day to where you just stop in place to listen to see if they're going to hit and then when they do hit then we all run out of our houses to see What's okay if everybody's okay? Um, between people speeding down Middlefield and people not being impatient and uh, wanting to, they're in such a hurry, they go across Middlefield. And you know how people are, you know, they speed, some people speed up when they see a person doing something, excuse my expression, stupid, like trying to. Uh, speed across the inter intersection. It's very nerve wracking when you're in your house and you don't know if somebody's coming through your wall. This has been going on for quite a while, and I just wanted to say it's real, and something needs to be done. I, I don't really think plants and trees are the problem, but. Um, I'm just glad you all are finally addressing it, but it is an urgent matter because I I don't want anybody coming up into my house and injuring myself or my family. And we're just, it's just a walking time bomb. Sometimes we get, um, it turns into an academic discussion where, you know, things don't fit certain models, but models change. And, uh, you know, for example, um, what was normal for blood pressure back in the 60s uh, has changed. What's normal for blood pressure now in the 80s, 90s, you know, it's changed. So I don't know what kind of models you're looking at, but and I'm not trying to be derogatory or anything. I'm just saying but maybe some of those things need to be looked at again because every situation is different. And I know here on this corner, every day, like they said, we hold our breath. You only see the reported accidents. You all don't record the near misses. So anyway, I, I just wanna say thanks for 
finally addressing this issue and um, I'll support you in whatever way I can. And I'm glad that you all are doing what you're doing for us. Thank you so much, Cooper. Yeah, thanks. I just want to um, remind everyone that um, if if you're having trouble um, providing your um, comment, that you can email it to us. Or um, just to a reminder, the the websites, uh, the email address and website are there. It's transportation at cityofpaloalto.org. Um, just want to remind you of that if you're having trouble providing your comment um, today. And again, thank you all. I know we've gone over half an hour over what we planned originally. I believe we were planned this for an hour meeting. Um, so thank you. Um, looks like we have one more hand raised. Thank you, Philip. Uh, we have about yeah, one more, last one. Uh, Amor, uh, you may speak now. Well, thank you. Um, th the thing is, is, I'm wondering why not put speed tables on middle field in both directions? It works on Channing quite well. Thank you, Amor. Thanks. I, um, that's, I believe, kind of similar to the, the response that um, Raphael gave regarding the um, rumble strips. Raphael, do you want to speak about that? Well, really, um, Channing is considered a collector street. Um, it's, it's, it's classified as a collector street in Middlefields and Arterial. Um, and so it's different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our, Policy and that we and guidelines that we follow, um, you know, don't don't allow the speed humps on on the arterials. So. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you, Philip. Uh, at this point, we don't have any questions. And uh, if you would like to, if anyone would like to have any question at this point, please raise your hand. I'll wait for about thirty seconds. Um, and uh, we'll answer uh, as best we can. Okay, we have Art, uh, seems like the last one. Uh, I'm going to unmute and see if we can hear this time. Uh, you hear me now? Art, yeah, we can hear you. Can you speak again, please? Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I just wanted to find, you know, it sounds like people have a lot of good recommendations and I know there's positives and negatives for all of them. Some of them maybe are totally unfeasible. But what I would like to get um, maybe today or uh, very soon, maybe on the website, is get, we, we need a timeline. So how long are you going to complete your study or is it already done? How long are you going to take input from the community? And by the way, you're going to get a lot of different opinions. In the end, you folks have to figure out what's the safest, most feasible thing to do and make that recommendation, right? There's going to be pluses and minuses. And um, yeah, and so I just want to need a timeline for, you know, how much, how many, because, you know, with Palo Alto, things go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth again. And that, you know, would be preferable to move on this. And also, what's the timeline for your short term solutions, whatever the trimming is, the sight lines, you know, when is that going to happen? And so that, basically, I want to, I'd like to see some timelines so we can move this along. Thank you, Art. Yeah, th uh, thank you very much. Um, or, so yeah, we will be posting a, a timeline as, as well as additional information on the website. I'm not sure, Raphael, if you wanna speak kind of to the the near term um, solutions, which include like, you know, the field visit to review any potential trimming, any new signage and all that. And then, um, you know, just to note that right now we're gonna collect feedback and allow people to if, if somebody wants to meet with us, um, you know, either in person or in the field um, or virtually um, or by phone or whatever it is, um, we just want to provide that opportunity. So we kind of want to get a sense from people how much they want to talk about this. Um, just, you know, we don't want this to be the only um, potential touch point for someone. So if somebody wants to continue engaging with us for a little bit, we want to do that. But we also aren't planning to hold back on implementing the near term, -term solutions. Um, so yeah, I, I, some of that's a little bit, I, I guess, in flux. So Rafael, do you can you provide any more context on the schedule? Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I think we do plan to immediately look at you know like if there's any low limbs or or high shrubs that can be um, remedied 
immediately as as well as if there's obvious like clear things like you know school pavement markings or or signage that that can be added within our current standards and guidelines i mean we do want to do that immediately meaning like this summer yeah um we do also uh yeah i i I've committed to a couple of you personally, or a couple on the call, you know, like to follow up and have have further discussions on them. Um, and uh, we do want to do that and gather more information, especially when it comes to things like the turn restrictions and stuff. Um, we do want to put a little bit more thought into that. And even even if, you know, if there is a, if we do end up or recommending or wanting to remove parking spaces. Um, that's gonna, you know, probably take a little bit more time. Um, we do um, something like uh, a raised island turn restriction, or you know, or a traffic signal. Yeah, you know, it doesn't sound like there's a, a major push right now for that. But if there was, that's something that we would want to take to our um, first to our plan, our transportation and planning commission, and then to our city council for direction. And um, you know, so um, that. You know, there there is some summer downtime with our public hearing process, um, but we would look to do that process going to our PTC and city council likely in the fall. But but even before that, we do want to do the immediate um, remedies that we can do that wouldn't you know um, involve requiring direction for changing traffic control or traffic regulations. Thank you, right, Rafal. Thank you. We have, uh, looks like we have it from Lawrence, uh, hand raised again. Lawrence, you may speak now. Great, thanks. Uh, just a couple of questions. Oh, I'm getting terrible feedback, so I'll be a little bit slow about this. I'm curious about the dip. I was told it wouldn't happen and I was told it would happen and it would happen within a few months, but that was over a year ago. That is that dip signs would be put up. So I'm curious what the situation with dip signs and with the possibility of getting rid of the dip all together. Um, you know, I, I'll try to speak to this. I'm not, I'm not directly familiar with the request. My understanding is, you know, we did get, I, I don't know if it was from you or from somewhere else, we did get the request for a dip sign and, um, it was investigated and determined that it, it wasn't necessary. Um, you know, that's about the extent that I know of it. I can try to find out more information on that. And, you know, um, the, what you mentioned earlier about the, about new drainage capacities, underground pipes, um, you know, that's definitely an interesting thing that I, I'm not familiar with, but if that is the case, yeah. Definitely, definitely well, something to be investigated if it can be removed completely. I'm surprised because I've put in these requests multiple times over the last four years that it wouldn't be in some file for when you guys look at the intersection that would pop up as a suggestion that's been made. So is correspondence not collated and kept in a file so that you guys can look back and see it all? We do, uh, we do have the the request for a dip sign, and I see that that was um, that was. You know, um, evaluated and you know, and eventually determined that it wasn't needed. I we don't see the request for removing storm drainage facilities. Um, we have a separate public works department with a storm drain division. Um, you know, like if are you seeing my request that was through three one one, but not the ones I've emailed in for the dip sign? That's for me personally. I mean, I I I, I don't. They go to they go to our other staff members and 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 I know and, and I know, I can confirm you know we have received the three one one requests um, and I, but, I, can't, I can't just personally I can't speak to the other because I was told yeah. I was told there were too many signs and you couldn't add them because it would confuse people but then later well, I was told to revisit it and somebody in the city said yes I'm sending it to the department they'll go in within a few months. And they cc'd me on that message and then i emailed back and never heard anything and they never went in yeah um lawrence could you forward me that email um but but just aside from that just want to note that i think 
what Raphael is talking about doing in the near term is going out there and evaluating sight lines and evaluating um, the existing signage, the pavement markings, and the street furniture. So I think, um, and, and he'd be happy to to meet with you out there and take a look at the dip and see whether there's possibility. Uh, you know, just noting that, of course, um, you know, not all of us have been around or not all of us were necessarily involved in the, the discussions that happened in the past, but we want to um, help to um, resolve any issues that are, are being identified. So um, we're not saying, we're definitely not saying no to anything um, right now. And apologies if um, you'd been um, presented with um, information suggesting that there was going to be an installation of a dip sign, but that's certainly, I, I just want to say that's certainly something we could look at right now. Um, and that's something that we could talk about um, in our near-term improvements. Um, so definitely not saying no. And just noting that the uh, connection to, you know, a storm um, drain system would be more of a long-term project, um, but the installation of a dip sign could potentially be a very near-term near um, project. Uh, there are dip signs at the next intersection to the south at Kingsley, and they get a lot less traffic. So there's an the identical dip, but there's no reason based on that, that there shouldn't be one up here, except there are other things going on, like there is a school zone sign. And But I would think it'd be more important to have signage about hazards near a school than, than a block away. So yeah, I, hopefully we can revisit that because I mean, not every car slows down, high clearance cars don't, but a lot of cars do. And I've interviewed heaps of drivers who said, I saw the car, it was plenty far away. It was coming south on Middlefield and I was going west on Lincoln. I should have made it. And I said, well, do you remember slowing down for the dip sign? And they go, what? I mean, for the dip. And they go, no, what? You know, if you stand out there for 20 minutes, you know, maybe every fifth car will slow down almost to walking speed, maybe every 10th car. But it only takes one car slowing down that much to get hit because they if they don't know about it ahead of time, they, you know, they just don't give themselves enough time to cross. They speed up, they see the dip, they slow down, and next thing they get hit because they weren't expecting to have such a low average speed across the intersection. So to me, that's huge. Um, other people have told me they don't think it's so huge, but not every car slows, but enough slow to make that a real hazard. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. I really appreciate um, your, your comments and your feedback on that. And that's certainly uh, worth looking at. Uh, all right, um, looks like we have one more and I think this should be our last um, comments or feedback of the night if that's all right with everyone. Um, so Sharag, can you unmute um, Barbara and Thank Bryn Ostby? Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, next one, we have Q, Barbara and Bryn Ostby. Barbara uh, and Bryn, you may speak now. Still not seeing them unmuted here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wonder if you could send an email to everyone who's on this call and get feedback on what we, the priorities we would like to see. Because I think there was a lot of support for the right turn only on both parts of Lincoln. And it would be great if we could see really good support for that and then maybe it could be done easily and quickly thank you very much so i'm just thank gonna, you, gonna note, i don't i don't think that we can um we actually can't see your emails or we can't actually in fact now there's only 20 attendees we had i think 28 at one point but um what we could do is um and, and just noting that we will um upload everything on the website but I think maybe the best way to approach that would be to um, maybe put a survey out or something like that. So um, I'd love to hear feedback on that, but that's something that we could put on the website on the project page and then people could provide their feedback on. And that could certainly be one of the um, survey questions. So thanks so much for your feedback on that. Um, with that, it looks like more people are dropping off. So I really want to thank you all for taking uh, time on your um, evening to talk with us about this and um, to share your, your thoughts and your concerns and um, your questions. Um, so thank you very much and um, thanks to staff. And with that, uh, I believe we can stop recording. Thank you all. Thanks so much, Philip. Thank you. Um,
Okay, I'll stop recording now. And just want to make sure you can capture all the um,